Good morning everyone. My name is Alan Cantle and today I'm going to present on strategies for CXL success in a world of proprietary coherent buses. Um, hopefully by the end of this presentation you will see the relevance of CXL as an open standard and how that can play nicely uh, with, with, with the open power environment. But firstly I'd like to reflect on recent coherent bus history. So back in 2014, the Department of Energy, through their Coral program, funded $325 million for um, IBM, NVIDIA and Mellanox to collaborate on, on a new supercomputer called the Summit Machine. And that Summit Machine was dis dis deployed in 2018 and became number one of the top 500 supercomputers with an, and, and held that record for an impressive two years. What's unique about this machine is it's, it was the first heterogeneous computer with processors and accelerators from completely different incumbent vendors being IBM and Nvidia. And um, on this program, the, uh, the tightly coupled coherent bus between the processor and accelerator called NVLink was, was developed. And so this was a great promise for our industry moving forward with this, as this supercomputer demonstrated. I was working in the FPGA industry at this time, and so I was personally looking at um, integrating the FPGA into this, into this platform alongside the GPUs, or even in some circumstances, FPGA-only accelerators with the, with the IBM CPU. Um, the sad news is that mid-program, NVIDIA decided to take the NVLink proprietary and that forced IBM to introduce OpenCAPI. And both of these buses are supported over the same pins on, on this supercomputing platform. So we have uh, OpenCAPI and NVLink fully enabled way back in 2018. Um, the sad news is that IBM and NVIDIA then had to go their own separate ways because of these proprietary buses and the industry progress has really been hampered by these proprietary interests. Um, so four years later, fast forward to today, and what do we have? Well, we, we have an increase in number of proprietary buses. Uh, AMD's just in, uh, introduced their Infinity Fabric, and we have lots of startups we are also introducing their own proprietary buses. And as an HPC architect, the only way to connect uh, one, the best-in-class processor from one vendor with a best-in-class accelerator from another is, is, to, um, is to go through PCIe, Ethernet or InfiniBand. But we do have the promised land of tomorrow where CXL is going to allow us uh, to, to connect uh, processors to, 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 to other people's accelerators and additionally provide everyone access to a, a large shared memory pool. So this is encouraging, but if you take a closer look at this diagram, you can see that, that CXL is really playing second class citizen as far as the proprietary vendors are concerned and, and that with their pro priority on their proprietary buses. Um, so we, we've, we've if you look at this closely, you can see that CXL is really gonna have limited scope for adoption while the proprietary buses and local memories consume the, all the I.O. resources. So when you really look at this closely, the, the Dye Beachfront is full already and or BJ package sizes are becoming unmanageable and unroutable. So I've given you three examples from AMD, IBM and NVIDIA and showing uh, how these memory channels, uh, in the insatiable bandwidth needs and these uh, proprietary buses are consuming much of the Dye Front leaving a relatively little amount for PCI. And it's the PCI channels that are gonna be upgraded with CXL, um, such as CXL.cache for accelerator attach and CXL.mem for additional memory expansion opportunities. And those are even gonna compete with the CXL.io PCI peripherals like, uh, like, like 400 gig ethernet. So this is really gonna limit the scope for, for CXL, CXL's adoption. Um, not only that, but uh, what about sharing the local memory, no, local near memory as part of the CXL shared memory pool? Host processors need low latency local near memory. For example, DDR, HBM, 
or OMI. And this memory can get stranded if it's not needed by applications running on the host. Ideally, we want to make unused host local near memory available to others via CXL so that it's converged from both the host and the accelerator's perspective. But unfortunately today, CXL's asymmetric structure doesn't allow for this. If we look at this another way, uh, using the representative CXL usages, you can clearly see the local DRAM uh, attached to the processor, which, it, which currently today is not able to be shared. But hopefully the promise of CXL3 may support memory buffer in reverse, and that local near memory will no longer be stranded. But that comes with its own challenges, even if we do move down that line. So let's take a closer look at the challenges. Sharing DDR over CXL.mem will actually steal bandwidth from the processor cores. So that's both local memory bandwidth and CXLIO bandwidth. So that's a less than desirable approach when you come to need, when you want to share this stranded memory. Also, long latencies routing between the DDR and CXL ports, we have long latencies, mainly because these are large processor die areas that we need to navigate. And that large area to navigate means we're gonna burn high power for, for that data movement be between these channels. And we're, gonna, and we're gonna need to decide the ratio of local memory to CXL IO um, at processor fab time. And that may not be ideal for all applications. So let's say we've chosen our specific ratio of DDR to CXL, and I'm, I'm not considering the proprietary buses right now. Um, we, we still, we're gonna need external memory controllers and they are gonna require significant resources as they do today. And not only that, a fully featured CXL port also requires significant resources, which means that you have less area for processor resources uh, for, or, or you need a larger poor yielding die. But there is a positive note that we are beginning to chipletize the IO and it's becoming quite popular. So the controllers can move out into chiplets. But if you stare at this diagram long enough, uh, it becomes pretty obvious it would, that it would be a good idea to actually bring the DDR and CXL controllers together under a, a, a two port shared memory shared memory buffer with a memory attached to that buffer. And the, the, the significant advantage is here that processors will maintain their critical near memory, both from a bandwidth perspective, but low power, low latency memory IO. And these buffers were gonna be relatively small, uh, tiny little things. And that means that small shared memory buffers are gonna be low cost with low traversal latency and lower power than going across a processor. Uh, with CXL2, with a CXL2 port configured as CXL.mem device, we can loan memory uh, without consuming any processor resources. And if the CXL2 port is a host, then it can borrow memory, increasing the capacity of the memory channel to the local processor. And possibly when CXL3 comes out, we will hopefully have a fully symmetric memory sharing uh, which can take, take, take our um, advances of memory shared architectures to another level. So if, if we take a closer look at CXL's op opportunity via shared memory um, and how this will allow us to gain wider traction alongside proprietary buses, let's take a look at a few examples. If we added CXL shared memory ports to HBM, and let's take a look at the NVIDIA A100 as an example, let's assume that, that gets upgraded and they support the CXL over their Poultry 16 PCIe lanes, then um, by adding uh, CXL lanes to the HBM uh, as a dual port in the HBM logic layer, uh, we, can, we can dramatically increase the, uh, the CXL bandwidth, in fact, by 600% increase over the standard NVIDIA A100. And not only that, the 96 gigabytes of HBM memory could be lent to CXL, to the CXL shared memory pool. Uh, looking at uh, the IBM processor, 
uh, we're adding CXL shared memory ports to the open memory interface uh, with the OMI buffers, which already exist. Um, we can see that we can uh, we can actually take today's IBM Power 10 that's in production and actually enable it with CXL, whereas it, it currently doesn't support CXL. And here we could add 128 links of CXL on, uh, via the OMI buffers. And um, uh, th those are OMI mem that OMI memory can support up to, to four terabytes over those, those 16 channels. Which would mean that we uh, we could we that, that memory could be lendable to the CXL shared memory pool. If we take a look at the AMD uh, Epic processor, we notice that that's got a separate I/O die, and at the moment that has eight DDR4 channels, um, and you can see that they haven't chipletized that yet. So so therefore that's consuming some considerable area for a fairly paltry two hundred gigabytes per second of memory bandwidth. If AMD uh, chose to upgrade the IO die uh, with uh, OMI memory channels, they would be able to fit 24 OMI channels into that same beachfront and achieve a whopping one and a half terabytes per second of, of local memory bandwidth. So if AMD uh, uh, with, with CXL shared memory OMI buffers uh, had an epic with that, uh, similarly to the IBM now with the OMI channels, uh, they would be able to get an additional 192 two lanes of CXL onto their system. And this, this approach will give you 600% increase in their local near memory bandwidth with the OMI channels, a 300% increase in their CXL attached bandwidth, and would allow the up to six terabytes of OMI memory, local memory attached to the processor, to be lent to the CXL shared memory pool. Um, and all of these, meanwhile, they are, keep, they are maintaining their own proprietary buses. So hopefully you can begin to see uh, how we can really help CXL to be successful here. But let's take a look, when you look at it back from the HPC architect's perspective, he's seeing a, a shared memory centric solution where all of these processors are beginning to share their memory through CXL and giving a wonderful data-centric uh, architectural uh, future for, for high-performance computing. But at the same time, the heterogeneous HPC can be achieved without sacrificing those proprietary buses that the incumbents are, are reticent to let go of. And so we, we really can move forward as an industry uh, uh, together here. So, in summary, CXL adoption is challenged by having to compete with incumbent proprietary coherent buses and the insatiable needs for increased local near memory bandwidth. CXL today doesn't address sharing stranded local near memory host, uh, near host memory. Uh, but a shared memory approach uh, will help rapid CXL adoption as it allows local memory to be efficiently shared without sacrificing local near memory uh, bandwidth or proprietary buses. And finally, OMI really does provide the ideal local memory interface to complement CXL. Thank you very much.